All right, respiration. Now we're starting to talk about respiration. Oxygen and CO2 will move along the pressure gradient, change the pressure gradient, and you change the amount of gas that can move according to Henry's law. And we talked about, on the left-hand panel, we're talking about how oxygen and CO2 dissolve into the alveoli through the, through the alveolar capillary. And there's another picture. Now, now we start talking about, again, this is the other side. This is in the capillary bed where you see oxygen dissolving. It dissociates because there's an, actually an oxygen dissociation curve, right? You've all seen that, right? The oxygen dissociation curve where if oxygen gets into a place where there is low oxygen tension, oxygen will dissociate from the hemoglobin molecule and move into that area. And you can change that oxygen dissociation. You can make it move off hemoglobin uh, more voraciously if you increase temperature, if you decrease pH, or if you administer like 2,3-DPG or some other chemicals, you can actually make oxygen jump off a of hemoglobin just a little bit faster. But the reason that the oxygen is jumping off the hemoglobin into the tissue is because of decreased pH, uh, increased temperature, et cetera. You know, just the things, the kind of things that you would want oxygen to jump off. You know, if you've got a hot, ass acidic muscle, you know, like you're running, you want the oxygen to jump off. Now, what kinds of things can screw this up? If you don't have any freaking hemoglobin, that's a problem. It turns out that normal saline, lactated ringers, doesn't carry hemoglobin or doesn't carry oxygen. That's an issue. Nothing, nothing replaces blood except blood. We haven't come up with a good replacement for blood. So just keep in mind that when we, when we talk about cellular respiration, the ability to use oxygen where it needs to be used, you've got to have the little boxcars of hemoglobin molecules to move it from the lung to the muscle. And if you don't have the little boxcars and the oxygen doesn't get off the boxcars, then you can't have cellular respiration. So amount of oxygen delivered to the tissue is dependent on the amount of oxygen available from the lungs to get on the hemoglobin, the amount of functional hemoglobin, and adequate flow of blood or hemoglobin to the tissues. All right, now here we go. Now we're really talking about cellular respiration. What does oxygen do? Why do you need oxygen? And here's why. This is the part that a lot of people don't understand. All right, what is this molecule? Does anybody know? Glucose, it's glucose. If you take glucose and you split it in half and you stick it in the top of the Krebs cycle, you turn the crank several times and out the side comes eight molecules of ATP and a pyruvic acid molecule for each half molecule of glucose, right? You take that pyruvic molecule and a little bit of NADP and you drop it in the electron transport chain and then you crank it a bunch more time and like between 26 and 28 molecules of ATP comes out, I can't remember the exact number, okay? So one mo half a molecule goes in the top of the Krebs cycle, crank, 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 ATP comes out, pyruvic acid comes out in the bottom. You take that pyruvic acid and you drop it in the electron transport chain, crank, 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 out the bottom, out the side comes a whole bunch more ATP and at the bottom come two electrons. You gotta do something with those electrons or your whole thing stops, right? What happens is oxygen comes along and picks up those two electrons and combines with carbon to form CO2. Oxygen is the garbage man. You don't live on oxygen. Oxygen is the garbage man that allows you to use glucose. Glucose comes out the, comes, goes in the top, Electrons come out the bottom, oxygen picks up the electrons. If you, don't have elect if you don't have oxygen, what happens is the electron transport chain doesn't work. What about the Krebs cycle? Does it still work? Yeah, it does. But what comes out of the Krebs cycle? Pyruvic acid. Two, th two components, two components. Krebs cycle, electron transport chain. Glucose goes in the top, pyruvic acid comes out here, and, goes, and you drop that pyruvic acid into the electron transport tank. If you, if you don't have oxygen, the ETC doesn't work, and you have pyruvic acid. You add a hydroxyl, I think it's a hydroxyl ion to that, or a, or a hydrogen ion, and you get lactic acid. That's where lactic acid comes from, is anoxic respiration. You don't have oxygen to pick up those last two electrons, and you end up with pyruvic acid, being changed into lactic acid. 
at the bottom of the Krebs cycle, okay? This is cellular respiration in its most basic crayon form. Glucose goes in the top. If you've got oxygen at the bottom, you get ATP and CO2 comes out and you breathe off the CO2. If you don't have oxygen, you get lactic acid. That's how it works. So you can still breathe. You can still keep, you can still keep your you know, cellular integrity intact if you don't have oxygen, for at least for a little while. That, but that lactic acid is going to build up and you end up gonna, your pH is going to sink and then cellular mechanisms don't work very well anymore and then you die. So don't do that. Breathe. Breathing is good.